What's up, everyone? You're tuned in to the Channel East episode 127. I am your host, Eatmon, because there is none other Saturday evening. And I do want to make this a quick one because tomorrow morning I am headed to New York City in timing for the 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly. I won't be attending the main event, more on the sidelines. I'm going to be checking out one that's being hosted by UNESCO involving Meta, the company Meta, regarding open source artificial intelligence and improving global language access. As we all know, AI is becoming more and more in people's minds sparking imaginations and ways to improve society and perhaps even social impact. So I'm very interested and I will be attending that event to check it out. It was really, you know, 2024 has been, I'm going to go a little sidetrack a bit, but 2024 has been quite a year because looking back, at my trajectory and i guess it also depends on my locale my my location being based in ottawa canada which is the nation's capital which is where the federal government is where our national institutions are and as an artist where everyone pretty much left the city to go to bigger cities where the perceived opportunities lie i stayed put and having done so just over the years, Ottawa's not a big city. People know each other. I uh, attend events. I spoke at conferences, art galleries, of course, did at my exhibitions. And you meet people from all sectors, including the federal government, including national institutions. Le leading to me to the point that it seems that my creative endeavors are now crossing over more and more into policy related um, discourse or policy, just policy related in general. I guess for me, I have an interest definitely on world affairs, uh, geopolitical matters and of course issues and fittingly i guess having coming from having attended the Banff forum to get more insight on the policies that are relevant to what's happening today in our increasingly polarized society that art culture for me is digital arts i believe increasingly has a more important role or a pivotal role in providing new insights and innovation and 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 discussions uh through uh, you know cultural diplomacy we really perhaps the some of the solution is to really bridge the gap through arts and culture Soft power diplomacy, cultural diplomacy. So one thing led to another. I keep on saying so. I say so one more time. I'm going to punch myself in the head. <laughs> um, I find myself going to New York City to attend this event because I am very interested. It aligns with my world. I want to see what discussions will ensue and what kind of uh, individuals I will meet at this event. And that's that. We'll see where that goes. But it's sort of like this needle, like, you know, this needle where I am like, you know, usually more on the digital art side. And on the other side, it's really more like, like, like um, governmental affairs, right? You know, I, I, I attended trade delegations, minister led trade delegations. Um, you know, I'm, I, I travel to Japan, I travel to China and getting different perspectives, cultural perspectives, um, observing how 
even how uh, uh, policy and political individuals, how they present themselves, how they speak, their, their mannerism, all these things. It's, it's quite fascinating. And this is part of the world of the, of the, the, the diplomatic package of be presentable and these sort of things. I, I don't know. I just find it really interesting, fascinating. And um, perhaps, perhaps, you know, I'm in my career as a digital artist and creative entrepreneur, I still continue to carve out new niches and new domain expansions. Who knows? Perhaps one day I can see myself in an increasing role where I'm involved with more policy related on the cultural side of things. That would be very interesting. I think I can do it, but it'll take time. So going to New York City will allow me to give more insight and in seeing um, uh, my first time attending a UNESCO or a United Nations uh, event. And I'm looking very forward to it. Lots of things happening. And I'm just scratching the surface, I think, you know, like, let alone, there's also uh, a lot of areas to explore with the UN SDGs. For those who don't know what the UN SDGs are, you should look up United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which is like an, an uh, assortment of color. You could consider it a, a, a rainbow of colors, and each color represents different aspects of addressing sustainability to have to build a better world um I mean, I could maybe I could give you a quick example all right let's share the screen this is the sdgs.un.org slash goals and there are in fact 17 goals all designated a color one represents poverty, two, zero hunger, three, good health and well-being, four, quality education, five, gender equality, six, clean water and sanitation, seven, affordable and clean energy, eight, decent work and economic growth, nine, industry, innovation and infrastructure, 10, reduced inequalities, 11, sustainable cities and communities, 12, Responsible Consumption and Production, 13, Climate Action, 14, Life Below Water, 15, Life on Land, 16, Peace, Justice, and Strong Institutions, and 17, Partnerships for the Goals. Um, so these are the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, by the United Nations. And in fact, the Canada Science and Technology Mural that I collaborated in creating with Tanya Woods, another, another fellow Bamfer, back in 2017, this mural does indeed address aspects of the SDG goals. Um, in fact, if you go to the mural, if you go to the Canada Science and Technology now, you'll notice that under in, in the mural, you'll see these triangles at the very top, these large triangles, and they have different designated colors, red, yellow, and for example, yeah, as an example. And in, in fact, it does uh, address aspects of these goals. So for example, in our mural, we have a red that's like no poverty. Uh, we have one about, um, uh, I know we definitely have one for peace, justice, and institutions. We have another color that is about hunger. Um, again, two. Uh, we have I we do have one on life below water. Yes, in clean water and sanitation. But we have things that are representing life below water. We have a. I think we have a purple one. Do we have a? I think we have a purple one. Something similar to purple. Yeah, I think decent work and economic growth. I think that was the one we we had in in the mural. So basically, we the mural that that I created 
looking at all the in- incredible archives of the Canada Science Technology Museum with Tanya Woods, we identified and through many focus groups identified specific pieces from the archives that are Canadian innovations. And we created this this mural that addresses each of the SDGs and where and and where each of those um, uh, archival those Canadian innovations inventions where they fall in that narrative. So I like to think that we were really a um, ahead of the time incorporating arts and culture into a policy such as the UN SDGs. So I think that's really, really um, forward thinking. And I feel, I have this inkling feeling that 2025, we are going to revisit all of this through more engagement with institutions that also share the same mandates. So yeah, even now, even now, in my almost 20 year career, oh my God, I continue to build myself. I continue to, I continue to evolve. You know, people ask me, oh, when does it end? It never ends, folks, because being a digital artist, being an artist is an, it's a life. It's a way of life. It's a way of being. It's not like I suddenly turned on, I became an artist. Oh, you know, it's, and I guess in some ways people say that whether it's, whether you you have it or not, or you don't have it, or you, whether you have it, what it takes or not, because I can't stop thinking about my world, my, what I do, my creativity and what, where I can go with it. Right. I get, I genuinely get excited and it's my passion. And of course I'm very grateful. So for those who are aspiring to be creatives, to be creative entrepreneurs, to be artists, I know that the route and the path that which we lead will not be easy because we have to carve these opportunities for our own. However, the journey is indeed adventurous and very exciting because you know that you are 100% accountable and you just don't know where it will lead to. And now, as I just showed you, it seems, it appears that I am going in this direction or this route and I can't tell you whether or not the outcome to my trip to New York is going to be fruitful, productive but I do know that whenever I face something such as this that is the unknown and the uncertainty that's when I know that how do, how should I say? That's the area that I need to explore. I I, I totally I'm so glad that I'm feeling sort of that little being a little angsty of what's gonna happen. But that's what we need. We need we need elements of that. We need to have that in order to to expand our reach and grow as individuals. Otherwise, I'll just be like same old, same old. Get complacent and just be comfortable of the expectation, but not in my world. That's just not me. Anywho, I hope you like what I had to talk about. Please like and subscribe. I'm going to have to go to bed soon because I got to get up early, early. So this is the Channel Eves episode 127. I'll try to do a Channel Eves from New York, live from New York City uh, tomorrow. Check out my Instagram too. You get more behind the scenes of my stories. But as usual, have a great evening. Have a great morning. Have a great...
great afternoon. I just messed that whole order up. Anyway, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. See you later. Bye-bye.